Every Sunday I feel very privileged and honored to be able to share the gospel with you, to be able to share my faith with you, to be able to celebrate the joy of Jesus Christ, the, the risen Lord, to, to celebrate his love, his resurrection, the gifts that he brings. And um, I never take this opportunity for granted, the, the opportunity to stand before you and to celebrate with you that we have a mighty God and a mighty God we serve. Now today, uh, I'm going to have to tell Don that I'm having trouble advancing our slides. So those of you at home will see the slides. Those of you here, you may not. I'm having a little trouble technically, which is interesting because I had trouble at the Sparta Church earlier this morning. There's like weird karma going on <laughs> with technical things today. Must be the humidity, right? Um, I heard a story not long ago, a story about a guy who was flying a tourist plane, one of these little, little planes, three or four passengers, and his job was to fly tourists across the Grand Canyon so that these tourists would get a better view of the Grand Canyon. And they, like I said, it was a very tiny plane, and he'd fly a group of tourists one way and back and forth. Well, one particular day, a very nervous tourist was on board on the plane and tapped the pilot on the shoulder and said, uh, excuse me, Mr. Pilot, but did you notice that your fuel gauge is pointing to the letter E? Can you tell me what that means when the fuel gauge is, is pointing to the letter E? And the pilot said, it means enough. Shut up and sit down. Does it really does it really mean enough? Today I want to speak about what is enough. Are you feeling that you have enough in your life? Do you feel like there's enough to go around? Do you feel blessed or do you feel there's not enough? I bring this up because more and more people are confiding in me these days. And they're starting sentences like, Pastor, I do not have enough. And you can fill in the blank what that is. I do not have enough patience to deal with my children. I don't have enough money in my retirement account. I don't have enough faith to get me through the, the difficulties of life. I don't have enough energy to get through these hot, humid days. I don't have enough friends in my life. I don't have enough fun in my circle of friends. And it goes on and on. People are saying to me over and over again, I don't have enough. Are you feeling that way? Are there areas in life where you're feeling neglected or you're feeling there's a scarcity? You're not being filled to the max? Do you feel like you're having enough in your life? Or are there too many vacancies? Not enough of this, not enough of that. I bring this up because in our gospel reading for today, we meet loads and loads of people who say we don't have enough of basic necessities. If you look at Mark chapter 6, which we read uh, recently today, Mark describes that the disciples were not having enough. Enough what? Enough rest. They weren't getting enough rest. They were running here, running there. Mark says they didn't even have enough time to eat a decent meal. They didn't sit down and break bread in a calm way. No, they were always rushing here and there. So they didn't have enough free time. And then he talks about the townspeople in verse 34. The townspeople, not enough spiritual direction in their lives. Mark describes them as being like sheep without a shepherd. They didn't know who to turn to for spiritual fortification, spiritual teaching, spiritual guidance. They didn't have enough of the Spirit in their hearts. Mark also describes these same people did not have enough food. Couched in this gospel story is the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Now you'll recall that several people were hungry that day. At least 5,000 people were in a deserted place without food. They didn't have enough. And then we learn that the townspeople didn't have enough medical care either. 
Back in the days of Jesus, there was not sufficient medical care. There weren't medical remedies available like we have today. People died at very young ages. Some people died from pneumonia. Some people died from a really bad head cold because it just got worse and worse and worse. They didn't have enough medical care. Look at these people, will you? 2,000 years ago, people were feeling very, very nervous about their lives. They didn't have enough security in their lives. They didn't have enough food. They didn't have enough hope. They didn't have enough joy. I add, isn't it a lot different now? We have it so much better than they did 2,000 years ago. The, the people who went to Jesus back then were really suffering in many, many ways. Suffering from scarcity, suffering from lack, they were needy and desperate. What about us? Are we like them? No. But that doesn't say we don't have our own set of problems to deal with. We also feel there's not enough and just fill in the blank. Some of us feel there's not enough money to go around from paycheck to paycheck. Some of us feel there's not enough free time. Some of us feel there's not enough time to enjoy with friends because of the pandemic and the restrictions we've had. Some of us feel very, very anxious lately. We don't have enough faith, perhaps, or enough hope in our lives. We struggle for meaning. We try to make sense of this pandemic, still unsure whether we're safe to go outside without a mask on, still not sure whether this Delta variant is going to get worse and worse as we're hearing on the news reports every night. We are wondering about this. And there may not be enough faith in our hearts right now. There may not be enough to pay the mortgage. Look at all the people who are out of work as I speak right now. They were furloughed or laid off at the beginning of the pandemic. Now, 15 months later, they're still struggling to make ends meet, still struggling to find meager employment here, there, and other places. People don't feel they have enough of the basic things in life to feel secure. What can we say about this? Maybe we should take a page right out of the, the Bible, right out of the lesson from today. It's all about turning to Jesus Christ when you feel like you just don't have enough in your life. One day, Peter turned to Jesus and he said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. What Peter was trying to say was, nothing on earth can satisfy our scarcity. Nothing on earth can bring us hope, but you, Lord, can. You have the words of eternal life. You can get us through this crisis. Likewise, we say, Lord, you can get us through this pandemic. You can give us the spiritual reserves we never knew we had. You can feed us in ways we didn't know we could be fed. You, Lord, are the answer to our scarcity. You fill us. You assure us when we're feeling there's just not enough. Today, I'd like to offer three suggestions. If there's an area in your life where you're feeling a scarcity, you're not feeling fulfilled, there's not enough of this, there's not enough of that, there's not enough of the other thing, let me make three suggestions. Number one, bring it to the Lord. Just like they did in the gospel reading. The people were hurting, they were, they were feeling empty and lost, but they came to Jesus Christ because they knew that Jesus Christ could address their needs. Don't be afraid to get in your prayer chair every day and say to the Lord, I'm just not feeling sufficient here. I'm not feeling fulfilled here. I'm not feeling happy. I'm not feeling the way you want me to feel. Lord, help me. And the Lord will listen to that prayer. The Bible reminds us, and I'm quoting right from the Scriptures, is anything too difficult for God? Will God ever say to you, your problem is too much for me. I can't handle that. You're on your own. No, God would never say that because God always has compassion and mercy. God gives us a spirit of fortitude we never knew we had. God fulfills us much greater 
than we could ever do for ourselves. That's the first thing. Turn it over to God. The second thing is just as important. If you're feeling that you don't have enough of whatever it is, then don't keep dwelling on it. If you dwell on the scarcity, if you dwell on the lack, you know what that's going to do to you? You're just going to get more and more depressed. Psychologists and psychiatrists tell you that when you focus on the negative, you become negative. When you focus on losses, you're overwhelmed by the losses. You get depressed. You get overwhelmed. You get anxious. But when you focus on the blessings you do have, it makes a difference in how you feel, how you conduct your life, how you interact with others. Did you ever stop and think for one moment that you can choose which way you look at your life? You can look at the blessings you already have or you can look at the blessings you don't have. You can look at ways you're blessed or you can look at all the ways everybody else is better off than you are. I'm telling you, if you look at other people with envy and jealousy and saying they're better off, they're better off, why don't I have what they have? You're just going to keep feeling worse and worse and worse. It's common sense. Focus on the blessings you have. And even in those darkest moments when you feel you're unqualified, you're unsatisfied, you're not being filled, you're not being blessed, I guarantee you when you start looking at your blessings, you have a lot more blessings than you even realize. You need to hold on to those blessings to see you through times of scarcity, times of want, times of anxiety, even times of depression. It's all about looking at where the blessings are and thanking God for them. So what do we do? Number one, we turn to God. Number two, we count our blessings and don't look at the things we don't have. But number three, and most importantly, we trust in the Lord. Trust. My parents are in heaven right now. But I remember days when I was a kid when my mother and father used to tell me stories about what it was like during the Great Depression here in the United States. And they told me stories when they were so dirt poor during the Great Depression, they really did wonder where their next meal was coming from. They didn't have enough to eat. The food had to be proportioned among the children in the family. During the Great Depression, most people were out of work. They hardly had two nickels to rub together. But here's what my parents always told me when they, when they shared the story. They said, somehow, some way, by the grace of God, we did have food on the table. Even during the hardest economic times, we got through it. We had food on the table. We, by the grace of God, survived one of the darkest, most challenging times of our lives, the Great Depression. God got them through. I'm saying this for a reason. If you're going through a hard time right now, it's very easy to get down on yourself, to feel like there's no way out, to feel like things aren't going to turn around. You're losing patience. You're losing hope. You're losing faith. But then... You need to look at the Lord who's going to get you through this. It's not going to last forever. This pandemic will not last forever. These terrible economic times are not going to last forever. But God will get us through. Just like Jesus got through and, and got those people through years ago, Jesus will take us by the hand and say, will you trust in me? I will get you through. There's a story in the Bible written by St. Paul. It actually appears in the New Testament book of 2 Chronicles. Paul describes a medical condition, but he doesn't say exactly what it is. He said he had a severe chronic medical condition. He called it a thorn in the flesh. He said, this thorn in the flesh was gnawing at me. It was, it was prodding at me. I couldn't get my mind off of this physical medical problem that I had. Paul said he prayed about it. He said, Lord, relieve this from me. Rescue me from suffering. Deliver me from this thorn in the flesh. Day in and day out, Paul was saying, how long is this going to go? How long do I have to suffer? When will I be rescued? And one day when Paul was in his prayer chair, 
the Lord whispered in his ear. The very words according to the scriptures are, my grace is sufficient for you. What God was saying to St. Paul is, you'll get through this even though you think you won't. And he's saying the same thing to you and to me. Whatever you're struggling with, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like there's no way out, God is saying, my grace is sufficient. And together, we're going to conquer this problem. We're going to get through this. Don't give up. I've said so many times in this sermon series, don't give up. Don't lose hope. Because it's always in the 11th hour, I can't explain it, but it's in the 11th hour when Jesus comes in and makes it all better again. Better times are coming for you. Trust in the Lord. And I leave you with one of my favorite Bible verses in all of Scripture. It's from Ephesians 3.20 where Paul says, God is able to do abundantly more than you can ever imagine. Your day is coming. Your blessings are just around the corner. If you're feeling insufficient or ill-equipped, this will not last forever. God will see you through. To that I say, please keep the faith and may God be with you during these very challenging times. Amen. May the peace of Christ which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.